Shocking scares, cannibal slashings, Jared Leto. Sometimes a horror movie goes too far, and that's when audiences decide they've had quite enough. If you are familiar with the work of David Cronenberg, it probably shouldn't surprise you to learn that audiences walked out of his latest film. A director known for repulsive body horror films such as Scanners and The Fly, Cronenberg's 2022 sci-fi movie Crimes of the Future follows human beings who volunteer to have their bodies mutilated for the sake of performance art. Never one to spare the audience some truly nauseating visuals, Cronenberg was certainly prepared for possible walkouts ahead of its release. Ahead of the film's screening at the Cannes Film Festival that year, he told Deadline, I'm sure that we will have walkouts within the first five minutes of the movie. I'm sure of that. Some people who have seen the film have said that they think the last 20 minutes will be very hard on people and that there will be a lot of walkouts. Some guys said that he almost had a panic attack. Well aware of his own reputation and the typical audience reaction to his films, the director seemed perfectly happy for viewers to leave before the credits rolled. And that's a good thing too, because that's exactly what happened. Following the film's initial press screenings, journalist Kyle Buchanan tweeted that more than a dozen people had departed the film midway through. But if you think that means critics didn't like it, think again, because the film also received a reported six-minute standing ovation from its Cannes audience. Sometimes a lesser-known horror movie can shock audiences into leaving the theater too. Take the British indie flick Men, for example, which comes from Ex Machina director Alex Garland. The movie revolves around Harper Marlowe, a young widow who takes some time to herself in a remote village after the death of her husband, only to be terrorized by the strange people who live there. It's a surreal journey into the bazaar, a story full of unusual and disturbing imagery that's meant to shock, confound, and ultimately convey a message about toxic masculinity. Unfortunately, the movie was hated by some audiences and proved a little too unsettling for others, earning it some pretty harsh user reviews online. Some found men so disturbing that they walked out. On Twitter and TikTok, users described the scene in theaters, with a number of users saying they'd walked out themselves after feeling too traumatized. I can fully imagine it must be dreadful for you. Still, while Men is clearly not a movie made for the squeamish, it received fairly solid reviews from critics upon its release. Director Lars von Trier is known for his deeply provocative films, such as his two-part erotic thriller Nymphomaniac or the supernatural psychosexual nightmare Antichrist. But while some audiences may have been horrified by those works, it was his 2018 slasher The House That Jack Built that really drove them to the exits. The House That Jack Built is an esoteric exploration of the psyche of a serial killer who bears his soul to the ancient Roman poet Virgil, or being led through Dante's version of Hell. On its release, the film garnered positive reviews for its nuanced performances and impressive direction, but it also met with plenty of condemnation from critics who decried its graphic violence, which also caused many to leave the film before it finished. Speaking about the film's Cannes debut, Variety's Ramin Satuda wrote, I've never seen anything like this at a film festival. More than 100 people have walked out of Lars von Trier's The House That Jack Built, which depicts the mutilation of women and children. It was quite the return for Cannes for Von Trier, who had previously been banned from the festival for comments he made regarding Adolf Hitler. In response to the walkouts, Von Trier stirred the pot further, claiming he was happy that it had upset audiences enough to leave. Darren Aronofsky is known for his intimate, intense character studies, which include movies such as The Whale and Black Swan. In 2017, however, Aronofsky wrote and directed Mother, a psychological horror movie that carries a number of religious and environmental themes. The movie stars Jennifer Lawrence as a young married woman whose husband, an author, labors under the pressure of writing his next great work. But after a stranger is reluctantly welcomed into their home, the man's wife and two adult sons follow. As the woman protests the new family's escalating disruptions, she becomes ever more confused by her husband's insistence on letting the intruding family into their home. Get out! Get out! All of you! Not nearly as straightforward a film as it sounds, Mother is full of symbolism, philosophy, and allegory. But unlike some horror movies, this film didn't prompt people to depart by terrifying them. Instead, it annoyed them. Maybe the deeper meaning of the story was lost on these viewers. Or maybe the less-than-literal nature of the story proved frustrating. Either way, users online from Reddit to Twitter described leaving the theater before it was over. Today, Mother stands as living proof that people don't always walk out of a horror movie because it's scary. If there's a modern-day equivalent to The Exorcist, a horror movie so traumatizing that it's instantly ranked among the most terrifying movies ever made, it's got to be Hereditary. Written and directed by Ari Aster, Hereditary begins with Annie Graham and her family grieving over the death of her mother. But in the wake of their loss, an even more grisly death occurs, and her attempts to commune with the lost loved one only reveal more secrets about the family's long lineage. 
Quickly gaining notoriety for its stunning twists and turns, Hereditary became one of the most talked about horror films in recent memory, and earned rave reviews from critics. Though the film plays to the fears of parents most of all, it terrified viewers of all ages. One particularly gruesome scene left audiences in enough shock that some viewers walked right out. We won't spoil anything for you, but suffice to say, it's not a particularly nice moment. Turns out Satan's got nothing on Ari Aster. Over the years, M. Night Shyamalan has become famous for directing movies with compelling mysteries capped off by jaw-dropping twists. After a string of hits in the 90s and 2000s, Shyamalan released 2008's The Happening, a movie that was heavily marketed around some great secret. Trailers for the movie teased a post-apocalyptic event, with cryptic clues that suggested an unknown attack of some sort was killing millions across the United States affecting all of the biggest cities. Ultimately, the cataclysm turns out to be a toxin that causes victims to take their own lives. And the big twist is that it's not a terrorist attack or a man-made virus, but a naturally occurring phenomenon. A silly enough premise on its own, the film is also lambasted for its stilted performances, cringe-inducing dialogue, and sloppy script. Just going to talk in a very positive manner, giving off good vibes. We're just here to use the bathroom. It's apparently so bad, in fact, that the happening regularly shows up on lists of movies that people say they walked out of. One online commenter said that the only thing memorable about the film was that they took the unusual step of leaving. They wrote, My dad and I still talk about walking out of that theater to this day, so it left more of an impact on me than several other films. In the mid to late 90s, the internet was an emerging new medium, and so a number of sci-fi thrillers tried to capitalize on the mystery of the World Wide Web. I want to get online. I need a computer! Horror movies were a little late to the party, however. One of the first attempts to scare audiences with what might lurk on the internet was the 2002 slasher Fear.com. The movie follows an NYPD detective who looks into a string of murders, leading him to a website that may be killing those who log on. That might sound like a fresh take on a ghostly slasher in theory. In practice, however, Fear.com didn't score many points for originality, with critics such as Cynthia Fuchs of Pop Matters feeling it was just an updated version of Videodrome. Rip-off or not, though, what it definitely lacked was a good script and satisfying scares. All in all, Fear.com wound up being one of the worst horror movies of the decade, and proved terrible enough to spark some walkouts from moviegoers. Over on Reddit, a user replying to a topic about movies they'd walked out on cited Fear.com, writing, it was the only time I didn't care that I paid to watch a movie. It was just so awful. There aren't a ton of superhero horror movies out there, but Morbius took a bite of the subgenre in 2022. Based on a lesser-known Marvel character first introduced in the pages of The Amazing Spider-Man, Morbius was supposed to add to Sony's emerging shared universe based on characters from the Spider-Man franchise. The movie starred Jared Leto as Dr. Michael Morbius, a scientist who attempts to self-treat a debilitating blood disorder with an experimental serum that turns him into a vampiric monster. Forced to consume human blood to stay alive, Morbius blurs the line between good and evil in a battle with Milo, another unliving vampire like himself. I'm starting to get hungry. You don't want to see me when I'm hungry. Morbius enjoyed some major hype before its release and quickly became even more famous for being absolutely terrible. Inspiring a full-blown meme craze, Morbius induced enough groans that fans went online to talk about how they'd abandoned the movie midway through, with one fan declaring on Reddit, It was Morbin time to get the f*** out of that theater. In his review of the film, Nerdbot reviewer Derek Murray called it a barely passable attempt at filmmaking and lamented that he had not left the theater himself. The 2022 film The Outwaters was praised for bringing something new to the found footage subgenre. The story follows four friends who embark on a camping trip in the Mojave Desert that goes disastrously wrong. A film that may be a better work of visual arts than it is a horror movie in the strictest sense, it was lauded by critics and attracted particular attention for its mesmerizing visuals and stunning use of sound. On the other end of the spectrum, audiences weren't quite as keen on the film, with many theater patrons less than thrilled about its gratuitous gore. And that use of sound? Well, for many, it actually induced dizziness and nausea. On Twitter, one user described their experience, writing, The sound made me so uncomfortably dizzy that I had to leave the theater to vomit. This never happened to me before. It's more disturbing than scary if that makes any sense. According to another moviegoer, the film proved so unsettling that it set off their Apple Watch's heart rate monitor. They wrote, The Outwaters is one of the most deranged nightmares I've chosen to sit through in a while. I quite literally was trembling in multiple parts. The sound is absolutely hellish. 
It should come as no surprise that Eli Roth, the man behind such horror flicks as Hostel and Cabin Fever, made a movie that had audiences scurrying away from their seats. The film in question was The Green Inferno, a blood-soaked cannibal slasher that turned the dial up on the gore for the sake of sheer shock value. The film chronicles the travels of Justine, a woman who travels to the Amazon and discovers a tribe of indigenous cannibals. Green Inferno is a no-holds-barred shock fest, assaulting the audience with the most hideously vile imagery the director can dream up. It is so horrific, in fact, that Stephen King gave his seal of approval, calling it a glorious throwback to the drive-in movies of my youth. Bloody, gripping, hard to watch, but you can't look away. But while King himself couldn't take his eyes off the screen, some people couldn't even stay in the theater. In online discussions about movie walkouts, Green Inferno pops up fairly frequently. And it's not always due to the gore. As one commenter posted, Reddit, f*** you for making me think this was a good movie.